Study our history, study the history of Islam. Why was the world conquered by Islam? Not through military campaigns and wars, but through Muslims being Muslims. The most populated Muslim country, Indonesia, was because of Muslims being Muslims. A few Muslims decided to get up off their behinds and go to another country and live their life as Muslims. I read all of these chapters and I, and I read the story of, of Jesus, uh, peace be upon him, because when I saw the name Jesus first, I, that really intrigued me. I wanted to see what does this book have to say about Jesus. And it was so, it was, it was more beautiful than anything I had ever read in the New Testament or any, any nativity story that I had ever heard. It was more beautiful than that times 10. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillahilladzi arsala rasulahu bilhuda wa dinil haqqa liuzhinahu ala dini kulihi wa kafa billahi syahidah. Ashadu an la ilahi lallahu wahdahu la syarikalah wa asyadu anna muhammad dan abduhu wa rasuluhu la nabiya ba'dah. Berjumpa lagi dengan channel saya Mars Tehno. Saya doakan semoga semua sahabat dalam keadaan sehat selalu. Pada video kali ini kami akan menampilkan kisah mu'alab seorang pemuda Amerika yang bernama Yusa Evan. Dalam pemaparannya sangat menarik dan menghibur. Saat ini beliau telah aktif berdakwah di Amerika Serikat dan juga lewat channel Youtube beliau. Nah sahabat mari kita saksikan bersama-sama videonya. Dan saya hanya sedikit mereaksinya. I remember the, the word change is when I met a Muslim. I met a Muslim who I had met a couple of times at school. We had went to school together and I knew him, but I never knew that he was Muslim. And, and there's a couple of reasons why I never known he was Muslim. Uh, because he was African American, number one. And the book said that Muslims were Arabs. And number two, I didn't know, you know, I thought Muslims ran around you know, marrying as many women as they want and killing non-Muslims. I didn't know that they could also be part-time drug dealers. So I didn't know, I never knew that this guy was Muslim. I didn't put two and two together. So we were at his house one day and me and my, my, my other friend, the one that, you know, I got into a lot of trouble with, I'm trying to keep him out of trouble now. Um, we were at his house and we were debating something about religion. I, for, I forget what even the topic was, but you know, you had two teenagers thinking they know everything. Um, and I was trying to explain something to him about the Bible. Uh, and that guy came in and, and was listening. He said, have you ever heard of Islam? I said, yes, I've heard all about Islam. <laughs> he was like, okay, so what do you think of it? I said, what do you mean what I think of it? That's probably the worst religion I've ever seen on the face of the planet. He's like, why? And he's like, but I'm a Muslim. I was like, man, st stop playing. <laughs> you know, like, you're, you're, you're an African American. You know, he's like, so? I'm like, the book said you guys were Arab. They, all the, the Muslims were Arabs. He, and, and he was like, what else did you read in the book? And I told him, he was like, man, what in the, you know, what have you been reading? <laughs> he's like, you need to, 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 to go uh, to the mosque for Juma. He's like, I, he, he told me, he said, I'm not a good Muslim. This is what he said to me. He said, I'm not a good Muslim. I, I'm not even going to. Uh, try to front and say I'm a good Muslim. He said, but I can guide you to some people that can tell you the real truth about Islam uh, because he knew about my story about wanting to find religion. And he said, you need to go to the mosque for Juma. And I said, what's, what's Juma? He said, it's just like church with no chairs. <laughs> and I said, I can do church with no chairs because in church the chairs were the worst part anyway. <laughs> Because they had these hard benches that you sit on that are like this and are so hard. I said, that's good that you sit on carpet. Wow, man, they should, every church should be like that. And uh, I said, where's the mosque? He said, it's on Wade Hampton Boulevard. I said, where on Wade Hampton Boulevard? I, I lived on Wade Hampton Boulevard. I lived right off of Wade Hampton Boulevard. He said, you know where Lee Road intersects with Wade Hampton? I said, yeah, yeah, I, I live on the other side of that intersection. He said, it's right there. I said, no, it's not. There's nothing. There's a gas station or a church. He said, yeah, you know that church, the evangelical missionary training facility? I said, yeah, I used to take missionary classes there. He said, you know that building in, in the parking lot with the gold thing on top? I said, the, yeah, the gym? He was like, no, that's the mosque. Because I had always thought it was the gym because it was in the same parking lot and it was just rectangular with two glass doors in the front. And you could literally walk in between the church and, and, and the masjid and touch them like this. Anyone doesn't believe me, go to Greenville, South Carolina, look at the masjid. You can almost touch the both of them just like this. <clears throat> he said, yes, yeah, right there. I said, I've never, you know, at first I was shocked. Like, I've been living across the street from all these crazy Muslims all my life. <laughs> you know, I said, I never knew. 
you know, and he told me to go to Juma, and I asked him what time. He, he said he would meet me there at 1 o'clock in the afternoon on Friday. So I said, okay, I went on Friday, and I'm waiting outside for him. You know, I'm, I'm not going inside in front of me. Who I had no idea he was the imam. But he got out, and he asked me, you know, am I, am I waiting for someone, this, that, and the other. And I explained to him. He said, oh, yeah, we know this brother. Uh, you don't see him that, that, that much, but we, we know who he is. And, you know, he said, I'm glad you came. You know, he was a very, very nice, gentle young man. Um, and he invited me into the mosque. And I kind of wanted to wait on my friend, you know, but I didn't want, you know, at the same time, I didn't want to tell this man, I don't want to go in. So I went in, and they put me in the back and gave me a chair anyway. And I said, I came to sit on the floor. And they gave me a chair anyway, you know, and all of these people are piled up in front of me. And there's no Americans here. And I'm starting to wonder, you know, uh, if this is a setup. Because it's starting to smell like a setup to me. Because in my mind, I'm like... You've been set up before, and this, this seems kind of like this. So, and I'm starting to think in my head, you know, scenarios, you know, a young mind at play. You know, I said, this, this, this other guy, my friend, he probably was in the same situation like me, and he probably made a deal with them to get out, as long as he brought <laughs> other Americans and tricked them into coming to the mosque, so they could do their jihad after Juma and get their 70 virgins. <laughs> so I'm sitting here, and there's all these people in front of me and then there's a curtain with all these people behind me making noise and I have no idea who's back here so I'm stuck in the middle of this I hear that it's some women uh, but I don't, you know, I, there's a curtain, I have no idea so I'm like, there's something very odd about what's going on right here I'm like, just let me make it, I'm starting to look for the exit I'm like, you know, calculating how many people are between me and the exit, you know, I, I, I know some martial arts so I said I might hit a couple of them and I'm out and then the imam came, and I, I, I just now realized that he was the imam because he got up on the minbar, you know, and they, and they started to call the adhan. And, you know, I said, okay, that man seemed nice. He seemed genuinely nice. So I, I felt a little more comfort. I remember to this day what the khutbah was about. And I don't know if he did it because I was there or if that was his already planned khutbah, but it's almost as if it was meant for me. Um, the khutbah was that, the title of it was that the, the, the forgiveness of Allah is open to anyone at any time, at any place, uh, no matter what, unless they have committed shirk. And he said that, you know, God's forgiveness has to come from God alone. Uh, and he, this was the whole premise of his khutbah, was on forgiveness and, and tawbah. And I was saying to myself, these are all of the same concepts that I had uh, formulated through reading the religious scriptures myself. And I'm asking myself, where did he get this stuff from? You know, where did he get all this? And he started using uh, names like, uh, he used the name Ibrahim alayhi uh, salam. He used the name Musa. And I'm like, uh, he translated it to, to Abraham and Moses. I'm like, where did he, you know, where is he getting these? These are names from the Bible. I know these people. And so after this, the, the, the khutbah, they started lining up for the, for the prayer. And I got apprehensive because everybody's getting up in front of me and blocking my exit from the door. <laughs> And so I guess they, one, one guy in the back saw, saw me and he, because I had to move back a little bit, he said, we're about to pray. And I said, pray to who? And he said, to God. I said, which one? And he said, the, the one that created the heavens and earth. You know, the same one that's in the Bible, you know, the, the only creator of the heavens and earth, the only God. I said, yes, I, 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 I know him. Um, and, the, and, and so the imam started to pray and I, when he recited the Quran, I know it sounded very intriguing. I had no idea what it was. Um, but then when I saw Muslims bow and prostrate on the floor verses and verses of every religious book that I had ever read started ringing off in my head that this was the way men of God prayed and the first thing that I could think of in my mind was this is worship that's what I said to myself this is not prayer because prayers are asking God for something these people are worshiping God so I went uh, to the Imam after the after Jumai uh, you know he talked to me and I would have to say that I was probably a little bit rude with him um, and I've asked him to forgive me. The, you know, I saw him a few years later. I said, you got to forgive me for the first time you saw me. Because he started telling me, you know, uh, would you like to know a little bit more? He, he had a very heavy accent. He was an Egyptian brother. Would you like to know a little bit more about Islam? He tried to give me some pamphlets. I said, no, 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 no. I, I, don't, I don't want any of this right here. I said, do you have a book? This is what I wanted to know. Do you have a book? Can you give me? He said, yes, we have a book. Uh, I, I said, it's called the Quran. I said, can I read it? Uh, uh, is it in English? Can I read it? He said, sure, you can read it. And then he tried to explain it to me a little bit, how it came by. I said, nah, just give me the book, because the book should speak for itself. Um, so I took the Quran home, and on Friday night I started to read it. Because this is a book I had never seen before. Uh, and I was very interested. So I, I went home and I opened, this, opened the Quran, 
and I read the Fatiha, it seemed to me kind of like the Lord's Prayer, you know, it was a little, little similar to what I found in the Bible. Um, but then I started to read Surah Al-Baqarah. Uh, I started to read Surah al Imran, And I started to see names that I had seen before. I started to see names like Abraham, Moses, David, Jesus, uh, Yahya, John the Baptist, Zechariah, Mary. And I said, I know all of these names, but there was something different about these people in this book. Uh, the prophets that I found in the Bible uh, were people that were deplorable of, of not very character. These same men in the Quran were someone who were at the highest echelon of moral character and moral fiber. They were someone that was an example to be followed because they lived the message that they preached. Therefore, they were uh, able to be followed and emulated. So, I read all of these chapters and I, and I read the story of, of Jesus, uh, peace be upon him. Because when I saw the name Jesus first, I, that really intrigued me. I wanted to see what does this book have to say about Jesus. And I read the, the story in, 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 in Ali Imran, and I read the story in Surah Al-Maryam. And it was, so, it, was, it was more beautiful than anything I had ever read in the New Testament, or any, any nativity story that I had ever heard. It was more beautiful than that, times ten. Uh, the, I remember the only thing that I could capture in my mind was the miracle of how... Uh, because in the Bible, you never really figure out the conflict of how Mary gets over this... this um, Point, finger pointing at her about her coming with a with a baby and she's not married. Uh, there's no real end to that. There's no real defense for her uh, from this in, in in the New Testament. But the Quran is so explicit and so clear that the Jesus' first miracle was to speak from the womb as a to speak as a baby and defend the honor of his mother. Something that you cannot deny. Something that you cannot deny about her who Mary was when you have this baby speaking on her behalf. So, I would say, I read the Qur'an entirely in three days, but that first night, after I had made it through Surah Al-Ali Imran, my heart was already given to this book. I, I, I didn't know what it meant to be a Muslim, I didn't know how, how to be a Muslim, I didn't even know what that meant, uh, but I knew that whoever it was that followed this book, I wanted to be like these people. Uh, I wanted to be like the people that I read about in this book. Uh, these were people I could follow, these were prophets, this was a book of guidance and this was something that the book is calling and appealing to me that if you don't believe in this book, you never see that, I've never seen this in any other scripture the direct challenges that are in the Quran, that if you don't believe this book is true, put it to the test put it to the test and this was something that was so astounding to me that God is telling you over and over again, if you don't believe this is the truth Test it. Bring me something else like it. Test it. Put it to test. If it was written, if there was more than one, I mean, all of the analogies about God, everything was so logical, so rational, so reasonable in my mind that it was like 2 plus 2 equals 4 and that was it. There was no 1 plus 1 plus 1 equals 3, egg, yolk, water, fight. There was none of that foolishness. The Quran was very direct and very straightforward in its teachings. So I gave my heart to Islam. Uh, that night in, uh, in my living room reading the Quran and you know and I, I cried and cried you know that I had been looking for the truth all this time had searched all this way and it was right across the street right across the street from my house and so I went back on Monday uh, to accept Islam and ask these Muslims where in the world they've been all this time and I go ready to go in there and, and, and do my thing and I go and the masjid is locked and <laughs> Because there was, they only came on Fridays in for Isha uh, during that time, and I didn't know. Uh, so I said, okay, I, I guess I have to come back on, on Friday. Uh, because every time I passed by the masjid after that, it was always locked. So I came back on Friday, and I, and I took my shahada. As they say, the, you know, the rest is history. We already know this, that we can solve every world problem with Islam. We put it into it. But the problem is, we're hiding it from the people. Unfortunately, willingly or unwilling, knowingly or unknowingly, we are hiding this from the people. Study our history. Study the history of Islam. Why was the world conquered by Islam? Not through military campaigns and wars, but through Muslims being Muslims. The most populated Muslim country, Indonesia, was because of Muslims being Muslims. A few Muslims deciding to get up off their behinds and go to another country and live their life as Muslims, not shaving off their deen to be pleasing to those people, but being Muslims. No other nation was given this opportunity and blessing to pass on this deen except us.
because there are no more prophets coming. So the, the job falls on our shoulders. Qurans are not going to fall out of the sky and hit people when they're walking down the street. This job has now become ours. And just like if the Prophet Muhammad had not done his mission, he would have been accountable before Allah. We, if we do not do our job of spreading this message of Islam, we will stand before Allah on the Day of Judgment. Don't be the person standing before Allah on the Day of Judgment and your neighbor that you've known, your co-worker that you've known 15, 10, 15, 20 years come and find you and tell you, you knew this day was coming. You knew this day was coming and what was going to happen to me and you did not say anything to me. And those people will complain to Allah about us. They will complain to Allah about us. Because we have the truth right amongst them and we're not giving it to them. We need to stop hiding it in our masjids, in our homes, in our hearts. And we need to give it to the people. It's beautiful, trust me. Just hand it to them. Just hand it to them. I promise you they'll take it. Because it's something that is so pure and pristine. And everything. I thank you for your time. And if anything has been of benefit, know that truly all good comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if anything that I have said is incorrect uh, or, or, or hurtful or, or shameful, know that, that indeed that comes from, from my own nafs and my own lack of understanding. Terima kasih telah menyaksikan sampai selesai. Semoga bermanfaat, jangan lupa like, subscribe, dan share. Masya Allah, sebuah kisah rifat Islam yang sangat inspiratif dan menarik. Sejak remaja, beliau sudah aktif dalam kegiatan gereja. Berawal dari teman SMA-nya muslim dan memperkenalkan beliau dengan Islam lewat sholat Jumat. Dia mulai tertarik untuk mempelajari agama Islam Lalu mulailah beliau mempelajari Al-Quran Dengan membaca terjemahan Al-Quranul Karim Saat membaca awal surat dalam Al-Quran Yaitu surat Al-Fatihah Menurut beliau ini sangat mirip dengan doa Bapak yang ada di Injil Namun setelah melanjutkan pada surat Al-Baqarah dan Ali Imran Dari sinilah dia mulai mengetahui bahwa dalam agama Islam juga mengimani nabi-nabi yang ada juga dalam kitab lamanya yaitu Bibel. Disebutkan banyak nabi yang sangat mirip bahkan sama yaitu Nabi Ibrahim, Musa, Daud, Yesus atau Isa, Yahya, Zakaria dan juga Bunda Maria. Tapi sungguh sangat berbeda karakter yang ada dalam kitab Al-Quran dengan kitab Bibel yang selama ini dia baca. Menurut beliau, Nabi dalam Bibel dikisahkan adalah orang yang mempunyai sifat tercela dan tidak mempunyai karakter yang baik. Namun sebaliknya, dalam Al-Quran semua Nabi digambarkan dengan reputasi yang sangat baik dan akhlak yang mulia. Sehingga mereka patut menjadi contoh atau panutan manusia dalam mempraktekkan firman-firman Tuhan yang mereka sampaikan. Setelah membaca semua ayat Al-Quran, ada satu ayat yang membuatnya sangat tertarik yaitu kisah Yesus alaihissalam Karena ini menurut beliau adalah orang yang sangat beliau pahami atau nabi dalam agama Islam Isa alaihissalam Kisah Yesus menurut Al-Quran menurutnya 10 kali lebih indah dari kisah yang ada dalam Bibel. Ditambah lagi ada mukjizat pada Yesus yang bisa berbicara saat bayi untuk membela ibunya yang saat itu dituduh oleh masyarakat Yahudi atas kelahiran dirinya sedangkan beliau belum mempunyai seorang suami. Ini adalah mukjizat Nabi Isa yang tidak ada dalam kitab Bibel, namun ada dalam Al-Qur'anul Karim. Akhirnya, beliau memutuskan untuk segera masuk Islam. Nah, sahabat, mungkin itu saja sedikit komentar dari saya. Sekian, wabillahi taufik wal hidayah. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.